Welcome. Today we're going to talk about chapters 18 and 19 out of the Blueprint book, which are spot and projection welds. These two types of welds are very, very similar. Um, they have a couple of differences, but they're very similar. So we're going to cover both today. It'll work out pretty well. So spot welding might be like weld for weld, the most common weld in the world. The I did it when I was in junior high school. Um, they're they're super common. They a lot of shops have a little spot welder in the corner, and what they look like is you've got a, a set of arms that come out, a set of tongs, come out like this, and they've got little points on them, and you put the material to be joined between there. It applies pressure, and then puts current across, and it plug welds these two, or spot welds these two together. And what that looks like is you'll have a little bit of a weld right there in the center, with an indentation top and bottom where these arms compressed okay so where do they use this um, all kinds of manufacturing the big one being automotive pretty much every automotive manufacturer all of their car frames are spot welded together um, it can be a, a great welding process and it, it's very very easy to engineer around because once you know how strong the spot welds you're making are they can just tell you how many they need and the machines do them all the robots you see in the, you know, you see the, the video footage of, you know, the automotive line. We see, you know, robots moving around, arms grabbing stuff, and sparks flying everywhere. That's all. That's all spot welding. So, spot welds are made between overlapping members of a joint. The completed weld will have a circular cross section. So let me let me blow up the, the last thing I did. So here's here's our okay. So our, our weld will have a circular cross section in here. There'll be a little bit of indentation, top and bottom, because these arms pressing down, that's really key. That pressure is one of the most important things about um, spot welds. Without that pressure, we won't have the proper shunt. And shunt is what they mean by the path the electricity takes. So you've got the, the tongs up here pushing, if I don't have enough pressure here, let's say these two plates are touching a little closer out here. My electricity is going to go over there and down, and it's not going to shunt, shunt across where I need my spot weld. So the pressure here is important. That way our shunt goes point to point, and we get our weld right there. And they, This area, that actual weld, is called a weld nugget. That's one of my least favorite terms in the world. I don't know why. I just hate saying weld nugget, so I say it a lot. But that weld nugget is circular and cross section. So in this in the spot weld setup, it looks really simple, and it actually is. But there's a ton of thought that goes into this when they're designing cars, um, welding processes, and engineering welded frames for you know cars. And this is I worked with the guy that designed the um, the whole spot welding robotic system for the new Porsche um, line with a ugly car. Um, anyway, he designed all that stuff. Um, I went to a seminar with a guy who pretty much designed Toyota's setup to do cars in, um, in the Southeast. Um, sitting next to me was the chassis engineer for Nissan who had no idea what was going on, um, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, a ton of, of thought goes into this stuff because so a lot of the steels they use to build cars, they're not mild steel. They're very, very high, high tech, high strength steels called boron steels. And they actually need to heat treat as they go because the steel is so good. So they've actually got coolant running through these, these electrodes. So they can actually engineer how much quench they want in the weld. They engineer how much pressure they want, how much current they want, how much time on and off they want, how fast the current ramps up, how fast it slows down. So they have a ton of controllability in the setup, and there's really a lot to it. Um, so let's talk about the symbology. So spot welds do have arrow side, other side applications. So you can have um, arrow side or other side, and the symbol for a spot weld is just a circle. Um, always have a tail, so it's either going to be other side arrow side or if it doesn't matter it'll be just like that but you always have a tail and the reason for that is you have to, you have to state what welding process you're going to use for this so it, if it's um, if we're going to do it with TIG it'd be GTAW most of the time these are resistance welded so it would be um, 
ERW or, or some variant thereof. There's a billion different um, nomenclatures for them, but it's resistance spot welding is what it is. Um, maybe that's, what it, that's probably what the book says, RSW. I've seen it done both ways. Resistance spot welding, RSW. There we go. So in this symbol, we can also say a lot of the stuff we use for other welding symbols. We can talk about um, size or strength, the spacing, number of spot welds, all that stuff. So when we're talking about size or strength, it's one or the other. And we can do it either way. Either we put a diameter here, 0.25. And what that means is that is the diameter of the weld nugget. So my weld nugget in here is 0.25 inches right in the glare, 0.25 inches. Um, usually they don't go by size, they usually go by strength, and that, that is actually sheer strength. And you have to calibrate the machine every day. You have to make a series of welds and pull them and make sure you're meeting your, your shear strength. And that shear strength will either be in pounds or newtons, depending on if you're English or metric. Um, so let's say it's 100. If it just says 100, uh, don't assume that's a dimension. Assume that is a strength. But it's one or the other. You can't do both. You can't say I want a quarter inch one that's 100 pounds shear strength. It's one or the other. Um, we can say how many we want, and we'll put that in parentheses just like a, a lot of the other stuff. So that means I'm going to have eight spot welds in this stuff. And then I can also tell you pitch and spacing. So if I wanted them every three inches, that would be three inches on center. Okay. Um, so these weld symbols are real similar to all the other weld symbols we do. Um, there's, I don't know, it's, it's a weird welding process because it's not manual. It's not something we're going to do with our hands. It's something a machine's going to do, but the welding symbology is usually all the same. Um, the only other thing I want to say about spot welds before we move on to projection welds is I've been showing all these as two pieces being welded. Um, it's actually not uncommon to weld more than that. Um, three is very common right now in the auto industry. It's taken them a while to get there with the boron coated steels. Um, but they can do it now, and it's really aided their manufacturing, but it's going to work the same way. You've got your, your electrodes, terrible drawing, and when the current shunts across this, we're going to get a weld there and a weld there. And we have the same depression, top and bottom, but we're going to do that. They're trying right now. They can weld four, but it's not real reliable with the real high-strength high steel, so they're trying to get there. That's something they're... They've been working on for years. Once they do that, it'll improve manufacturability, but they're not there yet, reliably. But you can weld more, more than just two pieces. Um, it just depends on the pressure you've got and the amount of current you've got. So that was spot welds. Let's talk about projection welds, and this will be really, really quick. And the reason for that is um, projection welds are pretty much identical to spot welds with a couple of key differences, really two key differences. Um, the first one is... Projection welds are always resistance welded. We can't do them with TIG or any other process. And the reason for that is because the part is actually the electrode. So with spot welds, we make our little indentations. With projection welds, we actually make the parts with indentations in them. So if they wanted to projection weld two sheets, they'd make a sheet with these, with these what they call embossings. Best drawing ever on this whiteboard. So they'd make this sheet with these embossings, okay? embossing, if I can spell it, which are dense, basically. And then when they apply current in a very similar way, it's it's through those, um, it contacts through those embossed areas, and you don't have to worry about where the shunt happens um, because we're, we're showing them where it happens. Um, but again, they're always resistance welded. The key point with... Um, the key point with projection welds to know is that you can't just take something that was supposed to be projection welded and spot welded 
or that is spot welded and make a projection weld them because we actually have to change the parts. And after this is all welded, it looks just like spot welds because these all flatten out. They actually apply pressure to the whole thing and flatten the whole thing out. So um, if I started off, I'll draw it upside down. If I started off with this, after I'm done welding, I'm going to have that right there because this goes like that we apply current it welds itself together right there and that's projection welding um, I've never I've never seen it done I've never been in an industry that did projection welding but it's out there and trying to get an associate degree in welding you should know this stuff um, anyway if you have any questions about this stuff come find me in the lab come find me online I'll try to answer the best I can that's all I got for you thanks